Welcome back to New World Next Week. This is James Corbett of CorbettReport.com. And I'm James Evan Pilato of MediaMonarchy.com. France drops the carbon tax plan. We've got that story, plus Juncker cries uncle. But first, you've heard of the Snoopers Charter in the UK. Well, they don't call it the New World Order for nothing. As the FBI gains expanded hacking powers as Rule 41 kicks in, a last-ditch effort in the Senate to block or delay rule changes that would expand the U.S. government's hacking powers failed Wednesday, November 30th, as I speak to you now. Oregon Senator Ron Wyden attempted three times to delay the changes, which will take effect by the time you're watching this, December 1st. U.S. judges can now sign warrants that give the FBI the authority to remotely access computers in any jurisdiction, potentially even overseas. Plus, cases when a suspect uses anonymizing technology to conceal the location of his or her computer or for an investigation into a network of hacked or infected computers such as a botnet which I think seems to be tipped to become kind of the next boogeyman du jour. Wyden called it one of the biggest mistakes in surveillance policy in years, the unprecedented authority to hack into America's personal phones, computers, and other devices. Such authority was approved by the Supreme Court two months after Scalia died in a private vote earlier this year, but was not subject to congressional approval. Now, James, I've got one good turn deserving, deserving another. We go from Rule 41 to the reauthorization of the NDAA, the National Defense Authorization Act, for 2017. They finally reached a little compromise on the massive U.S. defense bill. Women are safe for now. They don't have to sign up for the draft that supposedly doesn't exist. The greater sage grouse, however, is screwed, and so are the rest of us here in the States, as the NDAA, the National Defense Authorization Act, which was created at the tail end of the Bush administration, and was renewed every single time by the Obama administration. It's loved and was created with kind of a truly bipartisan effort by both phony sides of the aisle. And it's still going to be legal to kidnap and detain Americans without due process or habeas corpus. So those are the parts that they all agree on. It was the part about the draft and the greater sage grouse that they were kind of worried about. I've got links on Media Monarchy back to 2011 talking about the NDAA, so we'll include links to that, just like we include links to everything that we mention on this show. So, James, how, in a way, do we even kind of fight against this anymore when it almost seems like everybody's almost kind of begging for more controls and more restrictions? Well, that's an important point. But before we get there, yeah, you're going to have to refresh my memory. The NDAA 2012, that was where President Obama said, yeah, I can lock anyone up, including U.S. citizens anywhere in the world, including in the United States, for any reason whatsoever, no, no trial, no jury, no nothing, habeas corpus, bye-bye. And he robo-signed that into existence, but he said, hey, guys, don't worry, I'm not going to use this for evil purposes, right? That was the NDAA, right? That is the, the very one. Yeah. And, uh, oh, yeah, and they do it every year. They have new goodies thrown in there, so... Business as usual, and uh, it's going to continue under Trump and anyone else who comes along in the future, because this is the way it's done now. It's the new normal. Yeah, pretty interesting. And you raise an important point, because how do you fight back against it if the people don't want to fight back? And that's that's a self-answering question. I mean, it, it, the whole point of this is it is the battle for consciousness. It is the battle for people's hearts and minds. And if the people are enslaved in their mind then nothing's going to happen. They're not going to demand any change. Uh, Rule 41, again, for people who haven't been following this story, I'll throw in a link to an EFF article from before this went, went into effect, explaining a little bit about it. Uh, the proposal comes from the Advisory Committee on Criminal Rules for the Ju Judicial Conference of the United States, and the amendment would update Rule 41 of the Federal Rules of Criminal Procedure creating a sweeping expansion of law enforcement's ability to engage in hacking and surveillance. So I will have an interview. I'm, I'm working on setting up an interview about this subject uh, in the near future and what it uh, really entails. But yeah, suffice it to say, if uh, if no one seems to even notice this, let alone be upset by this, then you know it's already lost before we've even started. Because as we've been talking about, as everyone has already sort of heard, the new fight is is fake news. And James, you know, so let me let me say here off, off the cuff what an honor it is to to be able to continue my work with such a propaganda mouthpiece such as yourself. The, the KGB <laughs> sends its regards. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, one other 
police state notes. And and again, so I think, you know, we've been talking about this for weeks. The battle is about now sort of fake news. When you have a whole now populace pushing for the controls, again, who's going to really kind of push back against this? And it involves kind of the technological overlay. So the other police state note that I'll throw in real quick, fingerprints will be mandatory when buying SIM cards in Thailand starting in 2017. Now, our second story this week on episode 291 of New World Next Week. Forget Paris. France drops the carbon tax plan. The French government is set to drop plans to introduce a carbon tax. French Financial Daily Le Seco said, Environment Minister said in May that France would unilaterally introduce a carbon price floor of about 30 euros. That's 33 American dollars a ton, which then pushed power prices higher in the spring when he said that. Les Echo quoted a source as saying that the measure is too complicated to put in place and might be unconstitutional, plus a big gas company didn't like it. A source close to the French government said, quote, in the current context, it is difficult due to concerns about employment, legal difficulties, and security of supply, end quote. Now, James, before we discuss this, just a quick sidebar and a throwback to the note about fake news. Both of those kind of main articles I grabbed actually source back to Reuters. Both the Rule 41 and Forget Paris articles, they both are filled with typos and syntax errors, which I found kind of funny. Hashtag unfollow Friday. So uh, a bit of a bit of pushback here. This isn't official, but the, the buzz is that France is going to drop the carbon tax plan. James? Supposedly, and again, we'll see it when it's actually does or does not come to fruition. So let's not count eggs before they hatch. Um, if it does, if they do end up scrapping it, it is a good sign. It is a sign of the pushback against so many of the oligarchical elites or would be elites plans that we're seeing across the globe in lots of different ways. And that's uh, to the good. So to the extent that politics is about the art of the possible, I, that's a wretch inducing phrase, but I think it, it does gesture to the point that we were making earlier, that if the public is leaning in a direct one direction or another, it's easier for the, uh, the, the, the oligarchs to, to say, oh, okay, we'll let you have, we'll let you have this cake. We won't let you eat that cake kind of thing. So uh, in this case, if the public is pushing back against this, if the tide is turning, if Brexit and Trump and all of these things indicate that people aren't going along with uh, things like the Paris Agreement, then the Paris Agreement won't go forward in the plan, in the way that they were planning to bring it about. That's to the good. However, uh, again, it does come back to the, the fundamental point of what the public wants. And unfortunately, I see so, so much of the public truly wants this nightmarish technocratic control grid to go into place to save the earth. It is not about saving the earth. People have bought into the lies. Either they, they're perfectly willing to understand and acknowledge, yeah, we're lied to about 9-11 and, and all of these things. Yeah, the government lies through its face and all of these things. But not about this. No, no, this is true. And they will not absolutely refuse to look at the data that does not support their climate cult uh, hypothesis. And even the people who do say that, well, yeah, okay, so the global average temperature is a fudge. And yeah, okay, so the, the, the extreme weather thing is a lie and blah, blah, blah. It's a lie, it's a lie. But, but it's for the good. It's for the good of the earth. It is not for the good of the earth. It is about this technocratic control grid agenda that's about carbon taxes that will lead into carbon rationing, that will lead into the smart cities of the future that they you can go and watch the propaganda for. They're already trying to condition people into, you're going to be herded into these little cities and every aspect of your life is going to be controlled. What you can eat and how far you can travel and who you can associate with. And all in the name of saving the earth. It is about creating the perfect technocratic dictatorship and people are stumbling into it. So we have to snap that conditioning. That is the fundamental point of this. To the extent that something like scrapping the, the uh, carbon tax in France is a gesture in the direction of people moving away from that, that's to the good. But I think still too many people are enslaved in their minds towards wanting this technocratic agenda to come forward. And if they want it, guess what? They're going to get it. That's yeah. As as we've been saying, uh, as lots of people have been saying in the weeks past, you you wanted a leader, you got one. Uh, I didn't have set up in our show notes, James, but I know you did just have a recent release. Climate isn't weather, so we'll add that to the show notes and hopefully again to maybe continue the point of if this is what people want, the pushback will actually happen. So our third and final story this week. 
Juncker cries uncle as he begs EU leaders no more referendums, they'll all vote leave. The unelected president of the European Commission urged member states to avoid holding referendums on their membership of the bloc, which is entering a last chance phase. Jean-Claude Juncker, the beleaguered head of the EU's executive arm, conceded there was a lack of love for the EU across the continent and that it was unwise to allow people to vote on such future membership. He told Euronews the EU should not, quote, deny or take away the people of Europe's right to express their views, end quote, except he added regarding referenda on EU membership. So it's okay for you to vote on things except about whether or not you're a part of this entire system. He says he thinks it's not wise to organize this kind of debate. He also squirmed around and claimed he's not concerned about the final result of referendums. But uh, what about Austria and what about France? And there's a lot of push and pull happening, as you've already kind of talked about, James, there with Brexit and Trump. And I even almost to kind of come back to a Pacific Northwest note, I in some ways see the Oregon occupation trial as another kind of pushback against massive overreach. So is it, I guess we're just kind of continuing the discussion of, of story two, is this real or is it just another kind of steam valve? Well, I, this is obviously a story that's perfectly in line with everything we know about the EU, which despises democracy and spits in its face in every possible turn. And hey, I'm no fan of democracy, but at least they give the lip service to being some sort of accountable governmental institution as if such a thing actually exists. And everything that they do goes 180 degrees in the opposite direction. Uh, they come out with the constitution, but France and Holland vote it down. So they say, okay, whoa, 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 it's not a constitution. It's a, it's a treaty. So we don't have to get it. Oh, oh, Ireland has to ratify it. Oh, they voted it down. Let's make them vote again. Oh, they voted the right way this time. Okay, we'll accept the results. Uh, every single time th this comes up for some sort of referendum or some sort of vote that the people actually get a say in, it gets torn down. It was exactly like Brexit. They actually decided to leave, and it looks like they might actually leave. Can you believe it? So, um, yeah, I think Juncker has good reason to be very nervous, as do, again, the, the, the would-be ruling oligarchs across the board, I think, are not getting their agenda in a lot of different ways. It doesn't mean it's over. It doesn't mean we've won. I mean, obviously, they're just going to regroup and try in different methods, but... For the time being, we're starting to roll back the agenda. So we have to push even harder now. And this is, I mean, for anyone in the European Union bureaucracy monstrosity, this is a rallying cry for you. They are admitting that the people do not want to be in the European Union. They're shoving it in your face. You have to keep pressing this even harder. And I think that's what this is ultimately about, is showing the tyrants for the tyrants that they are. And they're coming out and admitting it. So let's let's point this out to people and uh, and point out that, you know, the, the tide is turning and people are turning against uh, tyrannical institutions like this. A couple more examples of, of turning against the tyrants. MPs launched new attempt to interrogate Tony Blyer over Iraq, of course, post Chilcot. And James, another piece of work that you put out just recently, the Financial Times admits the New World Order gatekeepers are heading for maybe another Marie Antoinette moment. So another point that, again, the powers that shouldn't be realize, again, we're not saying they're panicking and they're – you know, building millionaire underground panic bunkers or anything like that. But they're obviously signaling to the world and through their mouthpieces and through their op-eds that they are kind of having a, a, a Marie Antoinette moment. James, any, any words about that latest article? Yeah, I think you're I think you're right. Again, it's all part and parcel. And it was just interesting to see Financial Times coming out and admitting it, because, of course, the Financial Times is the mouthpiece for the banksters in the heart of the city of London. Some of the other stories we are watching using hashtag New World next week. Fidel Castro is finally written out of the show at the age of 90. And two other dangerous situations, I think, that have pretty much kind of spun completely out of control. First, Pizzagate is going to be a panel discussion on an upcoming episode of The Daily Show. And the other powder keg slash honeypot slash dangerous situation is, of course, at the Dakota Access Pipeline. As the North Dakota governor has ordered evacuation of the protest camp, this ahead of the Army Corps of Engineers' December 5th date of threat, saying, well, we don't have any plans to forcibly remove anyone. But once they sort of set these deadlines, you know, it's probably going to turn hot. So we'll continue to watch those stories. And, of course, this is a 
completely crowdsourced and crowdfunded media. You can submit stories to us using hashtag New World next week. And of course, support both of our respective works by heading over to the support sections of our websites. James. That's it. That's going to do it for this week. James, thanks for the stories. Thanks, buddy. Take care.